Destination Yuri, the morning program, Rowan Hand, Fergal McCormack. Positive joy to welcome you again, good sir. Good to see you, Rowan. Always good to see you. Uh, you're with us for our usual economic slot. We, we've been doing this quite a while now. We sure have. It's good fun. It's good for always. You, you, this is a man who gives you the economy in understandable and bite-sized chunks, allows you to, uh, you know, it, he, he de clutters the whole message. Uh, and the message that's coming at the moment is Scotland, of course. Are they going to go independent? Are they going to stay in the Union? And yesterday the Queen was terribly, terribly annoyed about it all, intervening in all of that. What does it mean to the economy? Because the, the, talk, the talk is that the FTSE is suffering as a consequence of the close call in the vote. What are you getting on this? Well, I think it, it could have, it would potentially have major implications for the economy north and south. Uh, what, what's obviously happening is, uh, I think an indecisive decision will also be unfortunate. Mm. Uh, it looks as if now we're going to have a very close vote. Uh, I think there is some merit that says that uh, major decisions to change the status quo perhaps should require 65% uh, mm. to change it because if you don't do that one way or the other then unfortunately you're in a situation that you're into a referendum every couple of years uh, because yeah, it was so yeah. close. However, yeah. I think there are major implications if Scotland vote yes, potentially. Uh, they say they're gonna, they can retain sterling, but uh, if they wish to go into Europe, uh, ultimately the Maastricht Treaty is very specific on that. All new member countries joining uh, the EU must adopt the euro. Yeah. Now I think Scotland is probably looking at the Switzerland model but under the Maastricht Treaty, they can't follow the Switzerland model. The mm. Switzerland model is that they keep their own currency, they stay outside the euro, but actually, virtually every law they implement is exactly parallel mm. to European law. Yeah. So therefore, they're fully integrated in terms of doing business with Europe. Yeah. But they, um, will have to, they will have to apply to be, having been Europeans all these years now, yeah. they'll have to apply and say, yeah. please, may we come into yeah, Europe? Well, you see, I mean, some of the stuff won't be as bad as we can see with the... Uh, you know, the, the, the economic border between North and South here on the island. Uh, but but there are massive implications. I mean, uh, if you think about this, even probably f further implications is if the UK votes to, if Scotland votes yes, and the UK votes to leave the European Union, then you're going to have Northern Ireland uh, as two borders, Scotland, and the South in the Euro, and Northern Ireland, not in the Euro, not, in the, even, not, not only not in the Euro, but not in the European Union. Oh my goodness. Now, you can see the implications wow. for that will be quite yes, significant. Yes, absolutely. The, the other massive impact of uh, recent days is uh, sterling has weakened. Mm. And sterling weakening means that our exports become cheaper, okay? Yeah. But unfortunately, our imports become a lot dearer. Yeah. And, and more importantly, on the other side, uh, the cost of funds rise. Now, you may have noticed that uh, the head of the uh, European Central Bank uh, announced uh, that during the week that they had reduced interest rates in the European Central Bank to 0.05%. They haven't just got to naught yet, but they're yeah. virtually there. Now, that has big implications as well for the southern economy and the north, because yeah. What Are we talking southern and north in Scotland and no, Britain? No, no, we're no, here. no with us here, here we're back yeah, to here back again. To here, yes. Yeah. Because if you think about it, they're in the Eurozone. Mm. And that is why they have now made an application to Europe to see can they replace their IMF loans, International Monetary, monetary Fund, fund yeah. debt under the crisis, which they've agreed to pay at 5% per annum. Mm. They could now go and borrow perhaps at 2% or 2.5%. Yeah. And the difference could be as much as three to four hundred million pounds a year saving. Yeah. So that's you know, all these, and what you're really seeing is the cost of funds in the south of Ireland, in particular, will get lower because the cost of borrowing at present in the south for private sector business mm -hmm. is around five percent. Yet the average cost in Europe is three and a half percent. So yes. that's going to fall. That's a confidence factor. Mm -hmm. And the, the big issue then it's will be. Amazing for businesses in the south and for government in the south. Money is not going to become a problem. There's going to be a lot of money around shortly. Because the southern economy is going to grow by about 3 to 4% per yeah. annum. He was, all, he was also this week talking, Noonan was talking about paying back a, a chunk of the bailout money. Yes, yeah, so well this is back to this whole, this is the point I'm coming to. So they will finish up with a fair bit of money all of a sudden. But the big challenge will be, and unfortunately they don't seem to have learned from recent lessons, the challenge will be perhaps not to put that immediately back into operational funding, back into revenue pockets, 
but to prepare for the future. Mm. And uh, again, you know, if you look at the, the, the bigger questions down the road, that really are big questions. If you take the, uh, um, if you take Europe at present, I think in terms of population, I'm not sure exactly. It's mm. certainly less than 35% of the world's population, so, 30%, yeah, yeah. but it's uh, 25%, I guess, actually, but it's social welfare bill is over 50% of the world's social welfare. Wow, yes. So there, there are big questions here, mm. and uh, these are questions that actually will affect you and me. These mm. will affect our b everyday businesses. I just want them to keep paying my pension. That's all I want. I have a subtle comment for you to think about. Well, my God, yes. I think at the time of the famine, the population of the island of Ireland was 8 million. Yes. Uh, 1840s. And the population of the UK at that stage was 17 million. Yes. So if you think about it, the UK was not even double the size of Ireland. Mm. Mm. Ireland is nearly unique in that its population as of now is less, significantly less, than it was at the time of the famine. Goodness gracious. And yet the population of England is now whatever it is, 66, yep. uh, 67 it's million. Growing. So what does that tell you? That tells you that if we get it right, when we implement a strategy that uh, of growth, economic growth in this island. If we implement a strategy that mm -hmm. will encourage our brains to stay on the island and mm -hmm. attract some brains that left the island and young people back to mm -hmm. the island, with an English-speaking nation, with a very educated nation, mm -hmm. there are exciting opportunities. But it will require big leadership. Yeah. I wonder if that leadership is there because I, somewhere within my psyche I, I harbor the belief that governments never learn the lesson imposed upon them by austerity and by overspending and foolishness. I think they'll get the feel-good factor again and push the boat out again. They need to be very, very succinctly and well and focusedly advised. Otherwise, you know, the politicians will, they, they won't adopt the, the harder road. I'm not sure. I think to be fair, um there's, we all make mistakes, uh, and there were big mistakes made in the Republic of Ireland, but if you mm. look how quick they put a lot of corrective actions in place, they were very painful, but they mm. did put them in place. Uh, unfortunately, we're sheltered as a regional economy here in the north. Yes, we have that and, buffer uh, zone. You, you, you know, uh, you have to think of the, uh, and our over-dependence in the public sector is an issue. I mean, if you even take the whole welfare debate, I mean, there's issue, there's interesting things happening now. I mean, the Liberal Democrats are, Democrats are, are rethinking that. Mm. So you're mm. going to have a problem in England now all of a sudden. Mm. Um, you, know, the, you know, take the other bigger issue. If, for example, UK goes out of the euro, and you are going to have yep. a vote, Mm -hmm. What does the Republic do? Its biggest trading partner is outside the euro then? Is outside the euro. Uh, it, your, the Republic's big business is actually ultimately in UK and America. However... And they wouldn't then be able to trade with them. Well, they'd be able to trade, but they'd be different currencies. Different cur yeah. But outside yeah. the... Outside the if, if, if at present, UK is outside the eurozone, but if UK went outside Europe, Yes. European yes. Union, you're into a different ball game altogether. Oh, yeah, yeah. My own personal view is that the Republic would not vote to join, to go out, to leave Europe. Yeah. No, and I the reason so. why I think that is, is twofold. Number one, I think from a pure business point of view, it's acknowledged that Britain is a very important market. I think mm. they'll continue to do that. Mm. But I don't think the women of Ireland would trust Ireland ever again to totally manage his own affairs. Mm. Because the rights that women in particular have got, mm. uh, man and the heron have got under a European Union, mm. have been phenomenal. Mm. Equally, I think Ireland sees themselves as Europeans. And very the, much And so. the FDI yeah. is very important because it's, it's FDI, FDI in foreign, foreign direct investment. Direct investment. Very important yep. to the Irish economy. Yep. It really is seen as coming into an English-speaking nation in in the European Union. Now, if border controls is that went up between Ireland and England, it does create. So we're we're probably potentially in the most uh, uncertain times economically, internationally, from this small island yeah. than we've been for many years. Until this moment this morning, at which you have defined this, I hadn't even begun to imagine it was so complex. Well, it is complex. And, and then you've got to take another thing. You talk about the Good Friday Agreement. It's, you know, it's, uh, 
It's nearly, what, you know, 25 years since mm. the first IRA mm. ceasefire. Mm. But if you think about it, at the time of the Good Friday Agreement, we were talking about peace and prosperity. Mm. We're now talking about peace. The word prosperity has been dropped. Mm. I'm wondering, is that a challenge? Have we allowed our politicians in Belfast, Dublin and London mm. to drop the word prosperity? And because in, in some way they wouldn't have been proactive in encouraging the use of the pros prosperity model because they don't know how to deliver that prosperity yes, in a changing world. We, correct, but we have to also acknowledge that one of the big challenges of peace was to try and create employment for people, mm. to try and create a sense of place, a sense of pride, a sense we've of belonging. We've kind of largely done that, have we not? No, I think we've achieved phenomenal peace. I think, to be honest with you, there has been, I think, Invest and I have done exceptionally well mm. in recent years. Mm. But I don't believe that Dublin, London and Belfast have placed a big enough emphasis on prosperity. Mm. And maybe it is a coincidence mm. that the best economic period ever in the history of the South, and equally in recent years in the North, in recent centuries, was during the creation of peace. Mm. And have we made enough of the prosperity element of that deal. I wonder if it's, uh, to what extent uh, were we sort of fed the prosperity from America and elsewhere uh, in order to encourage the peace, but now we have been m having attained a level of peace and continuing on the road of peace that there's no longer seen uh, to be the need for the carrot of encouragement that we're now on our own two feet, having to find the prosperity ourselves. Well, unfortunately, I think uh, part of that could could be true, but I think sadly, or to the to the credit of America, they basically have spotted more than we've spotted. Mm -hmm. I think America has been very disillusioned over the Haas talks. Oh, yes. I think America believes that they can't understand how we as rational people mm -hmm. didn't realize that we had to move with momentum. Yeah. We had to move because prosperity is important. Mm -hmm. And really, if we cannot move by these issues of the past, the legacy issues, but you're not, what we're really doing is, is driving our young people out. Yeah, so, no, no, I'm sorry, I've got to say this. Yeah, There's a really go. big point. The point here being that our generation, it is on our shoulders whether we want to keep looking back or not. And if we keep looking back, what we will achieve is driving the, the future generations away. Yeah. So literally, we've got to stand up quick and look at whether the Good Friday Agreement stood for more than peace. Peace is very important. I never mm. take it for granted. Never. Yeah. But peace with prosperity yeah. is well worth going after. And I think our current politicians are not rising to the challenge. They're getting hung up with legacy issues. And the, the, the Haas thing you, you highlighted, absolutely correct. And now we find, now we have an America that's disillusioned. Uh, the Irish are still pigs in the parlour when it comes to prosperity and when it comes to peace. We're not doing, we're not measuring up to their requirements. And they're, they're the yardstick, if you like, the criteria for a civilised economic world. Uh, and we're well, not doing it. Well, I think we need to be careful again. I think our peace process will be held out the world over mm -hmm. as, a, as a very good role model. Well, we're not much it, good if we're, if we're, but, if we're not e even able to agree on flags well, and what I'm coming to is, the, But what I'm coming to is, it would even be a role model un, of unbelievable proportions if we could get back to linking prosperity to it. Mm. And to link prosperity, we're all going to have to bite our flags. Mm. We're Absolutely. all going to have to grow up very quick and re realize that this is a global market yeah. and a global world. We but can pride on our traditions. We can pride where we came from. But we've got to remember, we're not operating in a parochial world anymore. No, we're not. And literally, we need leaders who have, will take risks. And to be fair, over the last 25 years, the leaders who took risks have been rewarded. Oh, yeah. Yeah. But equally, to be fair, Haas was a disgrace. What, he fa what they failed to deliver was unconscionably well, awful. I think we're hung up with our own importance. It's taking us far too long every time to do a deal. Mm. You know, we've just got to get into a room, authorise 
particularly where people to do the deal and do the deal. This carry on coming out and talking to mass people before you can agree a deal. Yeah. Uh, democracy, it can't work. Yeah. That type of deal can't work. Because democracy puts I mean, the dealers know. in there to uh, act uh, on behalf of the correct. people. If you, if you, you, what happens is you, you elect people, you give them a stewardship role and you let them get on yeah, with it. Absolutely. You don't expect them to keep running back to the people every 10 months. Well, or going back to talk to every community group. Why do our politicians do that, for goodness sake? That's well, exa you have defined exactly what they do. They're, well, they're they're being led by the lowest common denominator of the of the rabble on the street. Well, I'll tell you why. Because to be fair to them, they've come a long way. But equally, uh, there is a fear of looking over their shoulder. Now, I simply say, the smartest people have never said everything is fixed. Mm -hmm. There has to be flexibility. Mm -hmm. Wasn't it Sir George Bernard Shaw who said, the only rule is there is no rule. You create a framework. I love that. Absolutely. So I, I wouldn't want to knock our politicians. I think we've come a long way. I am. But I don't I, mind. Why I, wouldn't I'd we knock them, them over us? I'd want to give them the encouragement to oh, realize yeah. they have forgot the word prosperity. Yeah, absolutely. And they need to grow quick because the world isn't going to wait on them. Good idea. Thank you. Thank you. Go well. Have a great day. Fergal McCormack.